all of next week. Correct. So you will get videos, and then um, what I will do is I will provide, uh, like I'll give you guys a very simple, so I'm already gonna do it today in class, so you kinda know what I'm asking you to do. So what we're gonna do today in class is uh, we're gonna quickly review you know, demand and determinants of demand. I'm then going to throw up on the board a list of 13 different possible demand shifters. And I want each one of you to take one. I mean, I guess I could just count them out, you know what I mean, and just assign them randomly. And then we'll use the whiteboards on the table to draw out the supply and demand graph and label things and then, you know, help each other at your table, right? Uh, I'll also walk around and if you're having any struggles with it, I will help you. So again, this is one of those things where, you know, when you're look, when you're sitting back and you're watching me do it, you're like, oh, that's totally easy. Yeah, absolutely. You make a line, the price, the quantity, downward sloping demand, like, oh, more people, you know, find out that it's good for you. The demand's going to shift to the right, you know, like it makes a lot of sense. But then when you have to actually do it from scratch, some students have, uh, have challenges with it, right? So I want to challenge you guys to, you know, kind of quiz yourself uh, today, just, you know, very informally by just doing it on the, on the whiteboard desk that you have. And again, I'll walk around and then next week I'll make some videos and then I will make a small assignment for each video. And one of them is going to be literally the, the copy of what we're doing in class today. You know, make a graph, tell me what happens to supply or demand, and then what happens to the equilibrium as a result. And then when we come back all together on Tuesday, you guys will turn those in, and then when you're doing like a Kahoot or something, I'll grade them, and then I'll just give them back to you, and you guys will get, everybody will get credit just for doing it, just like a Kahoot, and then the person who does it the most perfect will get the get out of jail free card. And if there's a tie, then that means that, you know, I guess I'll have to give multiple of you get out of jail free cards, so. Um, so that's the plan right now. Any questions on that? So again, I'll, I'll post an announcement, you know, reminding everyone the videos will be uploaded uh, by Monday. So, you know, if you want to get at them early, you can, but, you know, the videos will be about an hour, uh, about an hour long total for each class, right? Which is pretty much how long we, we meet here. Uh, and then we'll meet back in a week and a half. Okay. So last time when we tuned in, to survey of economics, we learned all about supply and demand, and we learned about specifically demand shifts. We learned about the different types of demand shifts, and we talked about the reasons and kind of why things shift the way that they shift. So let's get a different way of looking at this in our notes. So we're gonna have two graphs. And this first graph is going to just be all the factors that increase demand. So we're going to draw an initial demand curve. We're going to draw a rightward arrow, arrow. And again, when we're asking about whether something is, you know, increasing or decreasing demand, the thing that we can do, it's called the horizontal interpretation model. Right? That's just a fancy way of saying we're fixing the price. And we're saying if the price is the same and doesn't change, right? That's part of our ceteris paribus assumptions, the all else equal assumptions that are throughout economic models. All else assumed equal. So it, we can say, well, if something is going to increase in the demand, then that means that I expect there to be more quantity demanded in this new demand graph, right? So let's get rid of this. We don't need it. So what are some of the things that increased, uh, that increased demand, right? And so the first one we can talk about is, you know, some kind of taste shift that increases the popularity of something. Uh, the number of buyers could increase. Another way of saying that is that the population that's likely to buy rises. So the number of buyers, population that's likely to buy, same thing. 
income increases, but this one has some parentheses in there, right? There's a specific condition here. What did we learn about our income shift as it relates to demand? Are all, yep. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, the inferior goods, yep, yep, it goes down. And then the demand for normal goods goes up. So in order to have an increase in demand from an increase in income, we would have to have a normal goods only condition here, right? We also have the price of substitutes when that rises. That means that you are more likely to buy the thing for which it's a substitute. I found a, uh, a clever mechanic, mnemonic, right? You know, I'm all about the mnemonics. I found a clever mnemonic for demand shifts and substitutes. Substitutes starts with same, starts with S, which is the same word as same, right? Substitutes and same start with the same word. And when the price of a substitute increases, that results in the demand increasing, right? So these arrows are what? They're the same. So you can think about substitutes as having the same direction in those arrows. So again, sometimes it's easier for you to think about hot dogs and hamburgers, right? Um, or sometimes it's easier to just kind of remember whatever mnemonic works for you. So we're talking about related goods, which means you know it. It's going to be the price of complements next. Complements with an E, not with an I. And the price of a complement falling. Yes, absolutely. So you said when the, the price of substitutes go up, the demand for them goes up? Or am I reading So the price of, so so let's think about, so this is this is a failure of uh, my English, right? And, and, and the fact that I'm not being as specific as I should. So... In this particular example, right, if we had something that was hamburgers and the price of, you know, hot dogs were to increase, that would cause the demand for hamburgers to increase. Yeah, that's a very good question, and it's my misuse of prepositional phrases that confuses everyone there, so I apologize. <laughs> shot dogs, exactly. Everybody knows what a shot dog is. It's a wild new craze. So the price of a complement decreasing is going to increase your demand for this, right? So for this, we could say the price of a complement, right? We could say the price of hamburger buns. But was that like all the stuff with the tissue during the COVID pandemic? So the tissue with the COVID pandemic has more to do with, and we're coming up on that one, the oh. expectations that we had, right? And hand sanitizer. And hand sanitizer, absolutely. So everybody thought that, I mean, rightly, they, they, they thought that the demand was going to increase for hand sanitizer, which it did, right? It just did. You know, like, there was a lot of people before that, you know, never used hand sanitizer that, you know, started using it all the time, right? So there was panic buying, but there was also just an increase in demand for it. And then people expecting that increase in demand went out and bought it thinking, oh, it's going to be more expensive later, or it might be unavailable. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, the demand increased. Yeah, so we're, we're, getting, we're going to get to, that's actually the next one, so that's a very good segue. So the next one, the last one, uh, is going to be the future expectations that encourage buying. So we've got tastes and preferences, population, income. These two are our price of related goods. And then our last, our fifth one, is our future expectations. So if I told you that I had it on good authority that the price of coffee is going to triple tomorrow and you drink coffee every day, what are you going to go do? Go buy, right now. Go, go buy right now, right? Exactly. So the demand increases 
because of the fact that you expect the price of coffee to increase, right? So that's part of the, we expect economic agents to be rational. Right. Yes. And, and, and honestly, a big part of like a big part of inflation was the supply chain. You know what I mean? Like there was an issue. Containers became incredibly expensive to ship. It used to be like really cheap. You know, those big container ships and stuff like that used to be like, I don't know, $1,500, something like that. It, it went to like $30,000. So it just became prohibitively expensive to bring stuff in. Uh, it was hard to keep workers to unload because it's a hard job and then they were getting sick and then there was quarantine law. A lot of those ports are in California where the quarantine laws were much stricter than other places, right? So, I mean, there were actual supply chain things that were pumping up the prices, but, I've, you know, I've been, I did a lot of research about this and think about it a lot. Like, part of what I think and what a lot of, you know, expert economists think contributed also and you know how much of each one is is something that maybe we'll be able to figure out and untangle in hindsight but it was the expectation of future of, of higher prices so during so we have had historically low inflation for you know over 20 years or something like that right and so there was a uh there was a sense and, and honestly i saw signs of this before the COVID pandemic even happened. Because I remember Berkshire Hathaway, right? You know, the Oracle of Omaha. Um, he did a whole portfolio reprioritization uh, a couple years before COVID hit. And it was specifically because he was seeing all of this increase in the prices of all the companies and stuff like that, right? And he was just like, and people are paying it. Like they're charging more money and the demand's not, not going down. And so a part of this inflation dance is it's like the producers are going to push as much as they can until the consumers push back, right? Or, or until other people start competing businesses that undercut their now higher prices. So we're going to get into this actually, that like when we get into chapter seven and chapter eight, we're going to talk about kind of the dynamics within these markets and how things are supposed to work and how, you know, sometimes they don't work. Um, but yeah, that. The future expectations is is a troubling thing, and a lot of people think that the reason why, why inflation has stuck around is because of you know there's been an argument about you know is it like corporate greed you know trying to just just push prices higher when everybody else is pushing prices higher. It's uh, it's uncertain, you know. Um, I mean, one of the things is is that there's definitely a a herd mentality that happens. Right. So, you know, if if all the other products in Walmart are going up in price, like, why are you going to stay the same? You know, like, why wouldn't you go up in price, too? Like, there's a certain amount of inflation that is just kind of accepted and eaten at different periods. And so we could just be in a period uh, where, you know, there's very low unemployment and, you know, the, the, we also came off of, you know, there was government subsidies and stuff like that. Right. Which definitely helped to, you know, pump extra demand which drove up prices so it's also not to minimize the role of the government in reacting to the pandemic in contributing to the current predicament that we're at now um, is, that, is that why everything is the cost of everything is going up right now yeah because i noticed like before we used to buy, be able to buy a lot of food now we can just barely buy it, like a little bit because all the prices got yeah the prices have gone up and the packages have shrunk mm -hmm. right yeah, I noticed that. yeah. Like, yeah yeah and, uh, and, you know, part of it is we have had a very historically low cost of food in the United States as compared to someplace like Europe or whatever, right? I mean, we, we are one of the bread baskets of the world. You know, we do export, you know, we net export food to the rest of the world. Part of the other issue is what's one of the other major bread basket, like, core commodity producing regions of the world? Yes, but what's what's in turmoil right now that's causing oh, them? Or, um, Ukraine. Ukraine. Yes, yeah. Ukraine. Right? Like they can't ship their grain out without Russia messing with them. So it, there has been a uh, a a hit to global food prices because of this foreign war. Really, at the end of the day, um, you know, because of the internal internationalization of our markets and the globalization. 
you know, 50 years ago, that kind of thing might not have affected food prices here, right? But since we're so interconnected, if they drop off and don't supply that grain, then the international price of grain goes up, which means exporting grain now becomes more profitable than selling grain, you know, domestically. And so now you're going to increase the price of grain domestically to offset that opportunity cost, you know, that you could be selling it abroad for more money. So yeah, that's the reason why Russia started war with Ukraine is because of I mean, part of, part of it is that their economy, they were going into a recession and, you know, Putin's an autocrat, right? Like he's been ruling that place with an iron fist for like 20 something years and they don't have very much industry, you know what I mean? And so they, yeah, it was, it was a way to boost their economic output essentially. Yeah. Under the guise of what, what did they say? They were like liberating them from a fascist regime or something yeah, like that. Denazification. Denazification. That's right. Yes. Yes. Which is just so rich. So rich from, uh, from El Putin over there. <laughs> All right, back to textbook stuff, although I do love these tangents. <laughs> All right, any questions about these specific factors? We're going to do our quick little exercise, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about um, supply. All right. <clears throat> 